Today's Literary Concepts Lesson 7 is looking at three sound devices that are assonance, consonance, and alliteration. So to start out with, let's talk about what they are and what they do. Um, so first of all, all three of them are sound devices that usually you will see in poetry, but you'll also see them used in novels and other stories as well. Uh, poetry uses them, maybe they're a little bit more heavy-handed, but, uh, but yeah, you still encounter them in novels, um, and they serve the same purpose, whether you're talking about poetry or if you're talking about prose. So they create a rhythm, uh, or generally they can create some sort of rhythm, and they also kind of create tone or mood in some cases too. So uh, depending on what sounds are associated with what letters, uh, so for example, like a lot of O sounds make things feel kind of old, and kind of mysterious. Um, that's kind of how sound manipulates us uh, into kind of understanding a text. So the first on the list is assonance. Uh, and assonance is anytime we have a repeating vowel sound that happens anywhere in the word. So in the beginning, in the middle, in the end, it doesn't matter. Um, sometimes these are connected with rhyme, uh, or people will say, well, those are just rhyming words, which is kind of partly true, but not always. Uh, so if you're trying to remember assonance in this list of things, remember that assonance starts with an A. A is a vowel. That'll kind of help you out. I realize that we've got alliteration too, but there's a little trick for keeping that one separate too. So the example here, so you can see this, uh, you can see that even though the letters are different, so one is an O-W and then the other one is an O-U, they all create the same sound. Um, and all of these kind of generally happen at the end or in the middle of the word. The next one on the list is consonants, uh, and this one hopefully doesn't need too much of a reminder on it. So consonants uh, uses consonants, um, so these are repeating consonant sounds anywhere in a word. So again, they can happen in the beginning, in the middle, in the end, and again you see that in the example here. Okay, so the last one is the one that most of you are probably familiar with, and that's alliteration. So alliteration is a type of consonants. Okay, so assonance and consonance are the two big ones. Alliteration is a little bit more specific. Um, the reason it's specific is because alliteration are the, the sounds that happen at the beginning of a word. So again, the trick for remembering this one maybe is that you have these double L's in here. And so those double L's help you remember that these happen at the beginning of the words. So in the example, there's actually a couple things going on here. First of all, you'll see kind of like in the assonance example, just because we have different letters being used, it's the sound that matters. So silent circles susurrate softly among the sycamores. That's a lot of S's. Um, so all those S sounds that happen at the beginning of the words, that's the alliteration. All of those S's that are in blue, those are consonants. So again, there's a couple of things going on. If it came down to a quiz or if you're trying to identify it, we're going to identify it based on what you know, what is the most prevalent thing that we see. So in this case, because we have so many S sounds at the beginning of words, we're going to call it alliteration. Remember, consonants and assonants are a little bit trickier to find sometimes, unless you hear it. So to recap things, uh, remember assonants are those repeating vowel sounds that happen anywhere in the word. Consonants uh, are those repeating consonant sounds that happen anywhere in the word. And alliteration always has to happen at the beginning. All right. So this is something that a lot of authors use. It's a lot of uh, a lot of us use these things uh, without even knowing that we use them. Um, so sometimes they can be subtle, but like we say, they're used to create rhythm. They're used to create mood. So when you're reading a story and you notice that there's kind of some of these sounds, there's a really good chance here that the author is trying to create a certain feeling for the reader. It's not just because writers like to play with words. Um, so our buddy Shakespeare uh, in Romeo and Juliet is a, is a good example of this when he says, my bounty is as boundless as the sea, my love as deep, and more I give to thee. So we've got that rhyme that happens here. Um, we've got those E sounds, but we also have those ow sounds in bounty and boundless. So as you can see, they're used everywhere, uh, and that's kind of why we need to know the difference between these three. That's assonance, consonance, and alliteration.